When I was young, I could never have imagined that there would be a time in my life where I would need to figure out what to say to an audience of 300 people booing me for 20 minutes straight. And I know that a lot of you come here looking for entertainment, but I want you to leave this story with something you can do when that happens to you. <laughs> I am from uh, Long Beach, California. I am a writer, a poet mostly, and um, I'm obviously very rich. Uh, there is a, uh, there is the most partyable time in Long Beach that happens, which is uh, the night of Thanksgiving, when you can't wait to get away from your family, you're kind of fat and you feel good, and you can't wait to drink your ass off and throw up somewhere. And in Long Beach, that place is called The Prospector, which is a small country western bar in uh, the heart where the bangers be banging. And, um, Seinfeld, I don't care. Uh, so, this bar uh, had a band that quit one night, and the owner said to me, hey Derek, will you go up there on the stage and do some poetry for the people tonight? And I said, fuck no, everyone's drunk. But what I will do is uh, someone gave me, my friend who worked at uh, Yamaha, they invented this thing called the DJ Xbox 2, which was a shoebox sized thing the kids could wear around their waist and DJ a party. And it didn't sell because it had all pre-programmed beats and it was really crappy. And uh, I said, what I will do, I'll go get my friends out in the car and I'll come back in and I'll play some dance songs for you. And so um, he said, great, whatever, we just need to fill 30 minutes. So I plugged in the DJ Xbox 2 and um, <laughs> so shitty. I was singing, I, I said, I, I did the worst accent. I was like, hello everybody, my name is, um, yeah, I'm from uh, Stuttgart and uh, this is Glockenspiel and this uh, first song is called Drinking Beer and Taking Over. And I didn't know what the beat was gonna play and I was like, um, yeah, my problems. And I did that for 30 minutes screaming my ass off and, and what sucked is that everyone loved that and so whenever they said Glockenspiel's gonna play, people would come to that show. And I was in a, yeah, I know, because I was in a rock band that would rehearse three nights a week, sweating it out, and like 30 people would come, but when Glockenspiel would play with a piece of shit shoebox around my neck, 100 people would come. Lesson learned, people in bands. Have a good time. All right, so here is the story I wanted to tell you. I got a job writing in Nashville, Tennessee for a kid's show. And I don't know if you're in Nashville, Tennessee, but it is a strong conservative environment. And I'm not that used to that. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I decided that I'd reach out to one of the venues and ask if I could do a poetry show at one of their places. And they said, no way. <laughs> no way, we don't need it. Um, so I called up the next day and said, uh, hey, you guys ever have any digital bands play at your venue? <laughs> I had the, I was living in Spring Hill, Tennessee at the time. I said, uh, we have this band called Spring Hill Spider Party that has just blown up the Los Angeles circuit, whatever that is. And uh, we'd love to play here in Nashville. And um, so they said, oh yeah, but here's the only opening we have is January 2nd at 8 p.m. And everyone's drunk, you know, and I'm, uh, I, I'm hung over, you know, still after the, the New Year's. And so I remember um, that night, I had my buddy dress up like Merlin on the drums, and he was just mimicking what was coming out of the DJ Xbox too. I was like, this song's called Women Be Shopping, and, and, and I'll drink your blood, I'll piss gold in your face, I'll eat your children for the toddler taste, whatever. <laughs> Saying horrible shit thinking that everyone, everyone in Nashville wants to make it. That is their goal. And, and at the end of every song, it's like, hey, we're Spring Hill Spider Party. We don't have a mailing list. Fuck you guys. Woo! And when I, I play, play these songs, and I thought, like, I, I, this is my big fuck you for not letting poetry be heard in, uh, in Nashville, you know? So, which was, it's actually my fault. So then I, uh, afterwards, the owner was like, 
we've never seen anything like that. Can you keep coming back? So after a couple of years, this band gets kind of big for Nashville, and uh, still with no mailing list, we play all these shows. I, I get sick of Nashville, I move back to Long Beach, and uh, my and the story begins here. Sorry that I drifted that for so long. It's like eight minutes right now. Um, and uh, this woman calls me up and said, hey, my boyfriend uh, that you know or friends with, I want to fly you out for his birthday. And I want you to work on this graphic novel together, uh, but don't tell anyone. I want to be surprised. I want you to come to the restaurant at night, and I want you to dress up as a waiter and surprise him. And then maybe you could do some Spring Hill Spider Party songs at the Mercy Lounge, and we'll see what happens. And I was like, wow, great idea. And so the owner of the Mercy Lounge calls me up and said, hey, Derek, can we let people know that you guys are going to do some of your digital shitty beats, your little e erasure fuck fest at the Mercy Lounge on a Monday night? And I said, no, no, it needs to be a surprise. It's his birthday. Here's what I'll do. Every week, I'll give you a clue uh, about what is going to happen. And if you post it, that's fine. So I call him up with my big mouth, and I'd say, uh, so uh, this is Dr. Carlos Mandible uh, from Serena Spina Party, world famous pediatric gynecologist, and what we are gonna do, yeah, it's bad, get it. It's supposed to be. It ain't Vince Gill, guys. Spring Hill Spider Party. So, he says, can I get you a clue? And the Spring Hill Spider Party would always say like, every time we played, be like, yeah, this month we hate Rascal Flats because they're promoting flip-flops or whatever. And we'd hate a new band, and so this month we hated Kings of Leon, blah, blah, blah. I'd say like, our drummer dresses up like Merlin, and we hate the Kings of Leon. And the next week I'd be like, uh, someone's definitely gonna take a dump on stage, and we hate the Kings of Leon. So, I, I fly out, I fly out, I do the, uh, the waiter thing, and I was like, hey, let's go get a drink at the 8 off 8th on Monday night, the open mic night where a lot of singer-songwriters play, and they had a band called Moon Taxi play, and it all ends at midnight. He was like, when it's over, you guys go up, and those, whatever, 18 people clear out, you can do your thing for your 10, 20 friends. When I walk in, there are 300 people inside of the bar on a Monday night, and I walked up to the owner, I said, what the fuck is going on? You guys give away free beer? He goes, no. Twitter, dude, Twitter. <laughs> Everyone realized that that clue we kept giving about the Kings of Leon had to mean that the Kings of Leon were playing this night. No, oh, it's, it's gonna get worse. Don't ring that bell. I'm not gonna keep in track. All right, so what happens is I say, H how, how is this, how is this possible? It's so late, he goes, I, I know, uh, let's, wh what do we do? He goes, well, come with me. And so we go to the very back of the bar and there's this very, you know, Jake and the fat man, this guy looks like a fat man and he's sitting at the back and he goes, this is the manager of Kings of Leon. He wants to talk to you. And I go, hi, I'm Derek. And he goes, so this is weird. And I said, this is weird. How is this possible? He goes, I was gonna say to you, how is this possible? Because they're playing in Vancouver tonight. And I said, I, I said they weren't playing, and maybe that's worse. And he goes, well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna call them and see what they think about it. And I was like, I don't care, I don't fuck those guys, you know? I'm gonna go up there and play my ass off my erasure hits. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so all the open mic ends, and they're giving away beer, and, and people start chanting, uh, uh, K-O-L, and they're pounding on the walls, uh, like, I don't know if there was 200 people in here. Imagine like 300 people spazzed out, sorority power, Greek letters, fucking PBR all over there to their fucking rocket dog flip flops. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so we go backstage, I get my leather vest, you know, and, and then, I'm not saying uh, Nashville's homophobic, but I was like, oh, this would be fun. So we, uh, my, my bandmates dress up in, in very sensual dude clothes. Uh, I'll just say that. And so we're ready to go. I, I don't have the beat machine anymore because it broke, of course. And I've got all the beats on an iPod, though, which is nice. And um, so I go, what do we do? He goes, I'll go out there. I'll calm them down. 
it's gonna be fine. You just play your stuff, they're gonna have a good time. It'll just be a big party. He walks out there. Hey everyone, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I told you, I tried to mention on Twitter, the Kings of Leon will not be playing tonight. Woo! Everyone cheers and goes, but please welcome all the way from Oxford, England, Radiohead! <laughs> on a Monday night for free in fucking Nashville. So I'm backstage, they're going ape shit. And he comes back, he goes, go, 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 go. I said, no, 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 We ain't going out there, dude. We ain't going out there. He goes, why? I go, they're going to fucking rip our faces off. And he goes, okay, I'll hang, I'll, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. He goes back out there. And he goes, guys, guys, are you fucking stupid? It's not Radiohead. They're not coming here for free to play a show for the 300. You guys have got out of bed. But please welcome all the way from Florida, Creed. <laughs> leather vest, and I plug in my iPod, and, it, and all sound men know this sound when you like don't turn the sound off and you plug like a guitar in and go <laughs> I plug it in, I set it on the stool, and it's dead quiet. And this woman in the front row goes, who the fuck are you? And I said, if you're homophobic, you're about to love us. And I play the first song, which is, um, which, which is called, uh, It's So 98 To Be Straight. And, um, and these dudes run up to the stage with, uh, with these bottles. One's broken, and this other guy's a, a bottle that's not broken. And he runs up as the song's finishing. I stop the song, and he goes, fuck you guys, Moon Taxi is 10 times the band you guys are. And I said, but here's the question. Ask yourself this. How come they're not 20 times the band we are? Because I'm just playing an iPod. And we went in the next song. Here's what I learned from the story as this story winds down. Is that, number one, the, the bassist leans over to me. And we usually do the same way. We rip off our shirts and we go, shirts versus skins. And we jump out in the audience. And we, <laughs> and we're the skins. And we just dance like crazy. And, and the bass leader of me goes, I don't want to jump out in the audience. I go, don't do it. And they're booing throughout the whole set. And it's like 20 minutes in the straight booing. And it fades out. The newspaper writes about it. I get this, I get a letter in the mail that says I'm going to get sued because this guy lied to his boss about Kings of Leon who's trying to press his boss. For, from a paralegal I wrote back. I said, you two legals need to chill out. Uh, anyways, so. <laughs> Uh, but the moral of the story that I learned of this was that uh, at the, en the end of the night, everyone yelled, uh, was mad at us, and I sent this letter in to, as Carlos Mandible to the newspaper. <laughs> if you come back and talk to me at the, the merch people later, I'll tell you what it said. But it was, it was really terrible. Uh, and um, I realized that I had never felt such uh, strange empowerment because of this little weird microphone thing where all these people wanted to murder me, and I felt like, haha, I've got these four skinny dudes by me and I, we can't be stopped. Leave if you want or fight if you want. So we're still gonna make it in the newspaper. And I remember at the end of the night, like maybe 15, 10 people stayed to dance. And, and the guy who didn't jump out in the office, we didn't get murdered, he came up to me and he said, he, he goes, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, dude, we made it. <laughs> and I, I said to him, I said, I said, I said, what do we do? And he said, he said, he goes, we lasted. And I go, what is that? And he goes, I don't know, but that's something. <laughs> that was the coolest thing ever. All right, good night, everyone.